Oh, bonjour um, and bienvenue, my new French word, uh, to the sixth episode of uh, my French Revolution broadcast. And the French Revolution has now kicked off. And so um, this section now is looking at the constitutional monarchy. Uh, this is the first of, of two or three episodes that will look at that. Um, and really now we're looking at how the revolution is shaped um, and, and what uh, changes as a result. And the first answer is, well, quite a lot changes uh, on the surface, uh, at least. Uh, I mentioned last time about the August decrees ending feudalism or starting to end feudalism um, in August 1789. And, and around that time, at the end of August uh, on the 26th, the Declaration of the Rights of Man and the Citizen is written, which essentially promises a, a whole range of things, but, but basically boils down to promising equality for the people of France. And you can see that in a whole raft of reforms that are brought through. Now, I'm not going to go through them all in detail here. You'll need to do that on your own. But things like titles were abolished. No more could you be um, the Marquis de Lafayette, for instance. You were just known as, as Lafayette or, or the Abbe Sayes. You would just be Emmanuel Sayes from now on. And the tax system was changed. In fact, the tax system was, was ended by the end of 1789. They didn't implement a new one until uh, January 1791, which more in a little bit. Uh, and that new system was now uh, designed to be much fairer. It was based on your wealth rather than on your social status. Uh, a new legal system was brought in in August 1790. And that again uh, ensured um, that everybody was equal before the law and would be treated in the same sort of way. And this, of course, uh, later on in the revolution was why the guillotine was used um, for executions as a humane, um, quick uh, and, uh, uh, and clean way of ending people's lives. And it was to be used on everyone, no matter who you were, from uh, king all the way down to uh, peasant. Uh, as opposed to before, where the way that you were executed was uh, dependent upon uh, your social status. And uh, some of them were pretty horrible. Um, a new uh, um, guilds were ended uh, in Paris, another example of equality. So beforehand you had to serve an apprenticeship for a number of years and you had to pay your way into that. And eventually, uh, if you were deemed to be a master of a trade, then you could join the guild and you could um, uh, then practice as a furniture maker or a butcher or, or whatever. That was ended and suddenly anyone could be a butcher. Anyone could be a furniture maker. And of course, that's a great thing if you want to buy cheap furniture. It's not a great thing if you want to buy good furniture. Uh, in fact, there were strikes against that. And that led to the La Chapelier laws, which is kind of one of the things that shows that actually there was a, um, an effort to restrict the amount of, of change that was going to happen in this, in this period. So um, there is change uh, and significant change in some areas, but the change is um, controlled change. The La Chapelier laws um, f uh, basically outlawed trade unions, uh, the, the right of association, uh, and meant that uh, strikes were illegal. Other examples of the limits of change are shown in the voting rights that, that were brought in in December 1789. These were, uh, these uh, sorted people into active and passive citizens, essentially on the basis of wealth. Uh, and they were weighted in favour of the wealthy because those that were passing the law did not want just anybody to be able to vote or, uh, even worse, to become a representative. The limits of change are also seen perhaps in the nationalisation of church land. This was proposed in November 1789 as a way of getting money. But of course, the, the actions against the church, the Catholic church, um, uh, trickle on through the next year and a half. First of all, with the taking of their land and then with the imposition of the civil constitution of the clergy and then the demand that clergy um, swear an oath of allegiance not to uh, the king or, or to the church, but to the state and that they are now being um, controlled and administered by the state, by the government, as opposed to being loyal to their religious leader, the pope. So these things start to illustrate how there was change, but that change was limited. And you should be able to weigh up to what extent you think change here was actually revolutionary. But the other thing that's happening in this period is that you can see the start of problems of uh, what is this revolution about? It's very easy, the French Revolution, for everyone to join in uh, and to, to say, oh, yes, we want change. But the type of change was something that was already beginning to cause divisions. And so you've got uh, people like uh, Honor Mirabeau and Abbe Sayes, um, who represent the monarchists. 
And they thought that actually what they were acting against was anarchy and bankruptcy. And what they wanted to see was a more powerful and dynamic France led by the king. Already opposing them were the Jacobins, who thought that actually royal conspiracy was a danger to the revolution. Uh, and uh, they wanted a more democratic, representative nation that would keep the, the king and his ministers in, in check and, and hold them to account. And then, of course, you've got the emergence uh, of, of the, the growing emergence of the sans culottes. This is illustrated actually really early on uh, in the October days, in October of 1789. Uh, and they want changes to their everyday lives. Now, one of the issues, if you look at the um, changes that have been uh, thought about the legal system and the, the system of elections and the tax system, uh, change of people's titles um, and uh, ending guilds, a lot of those are, are kind of technical um, uh, changes to perhaps to people's welfare, uh, but also to to things that are are kind of more administrative. The sansculottes and the peasants around the country wanted the price of bread to go down. They wanted changes to their everyday circumstances. And on October seventeen eighty nine, they hadn't seen that. Uh, the bread prices were um, still high, and there were still shortages around. And they heard that the Flanders regiment had come in to uh, Versailles and had disrespected the revolution and had proclaimed that they were in favour of the king uh, over and against the revolution. As a result of this, they seized uh, some weapons and they started off the march from Paris to Versailles, led by um, the, the fishwives um, uh, of Paris, you know, literally the wives of fishermen or fisher, fishmongers, I guess. Um, now, Lafayette, the head of the national militia, was supposed to be keeping control of France at this time, uh, certainly of Paris at this time, and he tried to stop them initially, but was unable to. So then he had to go with them, with the National Guard. He was unable to stop them, incidentally, because the National Guard agreed with, uh, with the sans culottes that this action was necessary. So he went with them to Versailles and tried to kind of mediate and control things. And he seemed to have settled things down. Uh, he'd been up all night, so he went off to get a bit of, bit of shut eye. And while he's sleeping, things kick off again and people are rushing into the palace of Versailles and the Queen's very life is under threat. Uh, and it's uh, actually with difficulty that, uh, that Lafayette reasserts control of the situation and has to agree to bring the royal family back to the centre of Paris and to house them in the Tuileries, which is where they stay um, until, uh, until they're arrested uh, after the storm of the Tuileries. Now, what this illustrates is that right from the start, actually there are splits and problems in the revolution. When you think about why does the terror start later on? Why does the French Revolution turn in the way it does? Actually, it's because right from the beginning, there are numerous agendas going on. And although there is reform here, it doesn't make a quick enough difference to the way people's lives were being led and the feelings that they had as to um, how they were being treated by the powers that were in charge. Uh, thanks for listening. Um, hope that's helpful. Bye bye.